We, we own, of course, as you know, 80 percent or so of Mid-American Energy, which has a very large business in the UK, but that's an operating business. <clears throat> as you know, in the UK, there's a rule that, that requires reporting when you own 3 percent of a company's stock. And actually, there's some conditions <clears throat> under which <clears throat> the ownership will be reported even sooner than that 3 percent. There's, there's a provision that, uh, that uh, I think if there's an inquiry or anything that has to be responded to. So if you take a company with a market cap of, you know, 5 billion pounds, if we bought 150 million pounds of it, we would have to report, and that tends to, to mess up uh, <clears throat> subsequent purchases. So we bought stock, we, we own stock in Diageo, which was Guinness at the time. Uh, we've owned stock in some other UK companies, but we've thought twice before going over 3% because of the uh, reporting requirements, and then we'd, then we'd have to report if we were selling and all of that. So that's a deterrent, but it's not an overwhelming deterrent. And if we, if, you know, if we get a chance to buy a significant piece of something that we think is cheap, particularly if we could buy it in, 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 in one purchase, but there's there are a lot of special rules that, that kick in over in the UK that do not in the United States. Incidentally, there was something in the, in the journal the other day that said that we had to report if we bought over 5% of a company within 10 business days in the US. That, that is not true. That, they, that was a mistake in the report. Uh, but it is, it is the case in the UK that a 3% word reporting is, is, is triggered. But there, we would feel very comfortable with lots of UK businesses. And, uh, uh, you know, they'd have, it'd be the same criteria we applied to over here, a durable competitive advantage and a management that we like and trust and, and a reasonable price. And we have seen some of those. There was an insurance company uh, in the UK uh, the year or so back that I would very much have liked to have bought, but we couldn't come to terms on price. Uh, but we, we, we have no bias whatsoever against the buying business in the UK. And as I say, we at, at Yorkshire and Northern Electric, uh, you know, we have a business that shows in our report made close to three hundred million dollars after tax and actually considering my views on currency you know I, I I I would have I'd give a slight edge to buying something where the earnings would be in sterling in the future rather than in dollars Charlie well I regard it as kind of amusing that that uh, we ended up preferring the currencies of, of Europe when that's so much more socialized than the United States is that's a queer occurrence you actually prefer them or not, Charlie? <laughs> well, we certainly in recent, uh, over a considerable period of recent months, we've actually preferred the, the uh, currencies of socialized Europe to our own currency. I just regard that as an odd occurrence for both of us. That wouldn't have happened. No, no, if I, no. Up till three years ago, if I came back from Europe and I had a a euro in my pocket, I couldn't wait to run to the bank or someplace. I was afraid it would depreciate before I could get rid of it. The, uh, but I changed my views a few years ago. We hope to buy businesses and stocks uh, other places in the world. And, and Charlie mentions the, the difference in political climate. One, one thing, you read about slow growth in Europe and Japan and all those, and it's true. But usually, but the growth figures that you see are usually not on a per capita basis. And since the population of Europe has been generally very little change, whereas the population of the United States grows one or one and a half percent a year, if you look at growth figures in the United States and somebody says three and a fraction percent, that's not on a per capita basis. I mean, you've got, you have to deflate that by the growth in population. Whereas if you read about the growth in, in, in Europe, generally, you're dealing with a population base that hasn't changed. So the differences in growth rate on a per capita basis are not as wide as, as uh, the headlines would suggest. What obligation does